if you're watching my video, this guy needs no introduction. Uh, Randy puts out a lot of content, a lot of it useful. I watch most of his videos that come out. This one he put out last week, and I'm going to play his intro, and then we're going to talk about it. So a little rundown is he made this intro. I thought I didn't know anything about it, right, what he was talking about, but it intriguing enough to me to do a little research, dig into the numbers, and just see if what he was talking about was right, and uh, I think you'll be interested at, at what we found. So here's his intro. Guys, today I'm going to follow up the video I did a couple days ago talking about how the uh, Bassmaster Classic uh, coming into Grand Lake was a terrible thing for the lake and how the lake has suffered and went down the tubes ever since they've started having classics there. And also I'm going to address a uh, editorial that was in the Bassmaster editorial section by one of the uh, Oklahoma biologists talking about how great Grand was and I'm going to blow that out of the water with some tournament results that were, were a big, they had a big tournament at Grand Lake a couple weeks ago, and we're gonna go through the tournament results, and I'm gonna prove my point right on this thing. So this, we're gonna check that out, or talk about that in today's video. All right, so he's, he's, what he's saying is, Grand Lake's been ruined, in decline ever since 2013 is when the first classic ended up at Grand Lake. So, first of all, I thought that was kind of interesting that it's been ruined. The classic's going back to it. So that didn't really line up for me. Kind of got me thinking. Then he talks about this uh, fishing biologist, uh, Brad Johnston, and Oklahoma Northeast Region Fisheries Supervisor. He did a, an article on Bassmaster and another article that I found about the work he's done in Grand Lake and the surrounding lakes, but the work he's done to bring the fish population, to maintain it, to improve it, um and the habitat so randy's saying that that guy's blowing smoke about you know obviously he's promoting his own lake i get that but randy is saying that brad johnston is blowing smoke saying grand lake is good as it's ever been uh constantly improving and uh what i found supports what he said randy i don't think he looked into it that much i think he just um well Tell you what I think later on in the video about what he's so as far as by the numbers what I did was I looked up I wanted to keep it consistent right so tournament that that Randy is referencing is a BFL Okie division tournament that took place a handful of weeks ago so I went in and I pulled every BFL Okie division tournament one day tournament not their supers one day tournament like this one was and it turns out they go back 17 years. Uh, well, they, they skip a couple years, but 17 tournaments uh, back about 20 years of data. So Grand Lake results, starting with our current, um, the tournament he's talking about. And the winning weight for that tournament was 20, just over 23 pounds. The catch a check was just over 11 pounds. And 75th place, with, which Randy references in that video, was just under four pounds. And he was saying, that's outrageous. Not only these low weights uh, proving that the lake was in decline uh, or was ruined, but he was saying that these were all live scopers that caught any amount of fish on this lake. Everybody else basically zeroed or caught one. Um, that's a lot of speculating, but also point out a boat in the EFL series doesn't have live scope on it, right? 90% of them have it, 95% of them. So that's kind of my point with that. Um, so I'm not gonna read through all these results. This is 2024 back to 2013. And just keep these weights in mind for 2024. 23 pounds, 11, three. And I'll show you the average for the past 17 years of tournaments. This is 2009 down to 2000. Average. Winning weight on Grand Lake since 2000 is 2108. Average check line on Grand Lake, 2000, just over eight pounds. And the average for 75th place in a BFL on Grand Lake, four pounds, just over four pounds. So if we say 28, eight pounds, or excuse me, 21, eight pounds, and four, back to the tournament, he's talking about it took more to win it 
than the average over the last 17 years. It took him more to cash a check over the than the last 17 years. Just eight ounces, 10 ounces less for 75th place. So you can see some up and down swings in the years, but Lake is performing essentially as good as it's ever been. These Lake results speak for themselves. Um, but going into what he's saying about Brad Johnston, I'll just, I'm going to hit a couple quick data points about why this guy's not blowing smoke saying that he has been working to improve and showing improvement in the data uh, on Grand Lake over the last quite a few years. They learned from the past where they had planted fingerlings, figured out in Oklahoma the fingerlings die that very next winter. In 2016, what they did was a pilot program where they implanted Florida, pure Florida strain bass, one year olds. And those they found were able to survive the follow on winter gain enough fat and be able to mate with the northern strands and crossbreed. The root of what Randy is is remembering, I think, stems from a thing that was noted in uh, Brad Johnston's article. And that at Grand Lake between 2011 and 2014, there were extreme winter conditions. And on top of that, from 2012 to 2013, uh, a drought and that decimated Grand Lake's redfin shad property. Now, Brad notes that the fish population remained the same, but the threadfin completely eradicated. Um, they took over in 2015, so two years after all that, one year after all the uh, extreme winter conditions, started restocking annually threadfin shad. By 2020, threadfin shad population was completely recovered. So, they, the, even though the fish population didn't quite go down, clearly bait's gone down for the, that two-year period after those extreme conditions. That may be, and that was, it was all just post-2013, and the classic first came in 2013. So I'm thinking his memory is lining up with classic shows up, fishing sucks for a few, for a few years, but it's due to the winter conditions and the threadfin uh, shad dying off in the drought. Classic bringing people to your lake is not ruining the fishing. Then. The honey holes might get blown out, but you're relying on just honey holes. Fishing's not going to be great everywhere. And so that's what I think he's, he's seeing when he's remembering how good the lake used to be um, and trying to figure out, you know, on a dime when he's making a video, what caused that lake to... to um, I think it's pretty clear it's the drought and the cold weather and the redfin going away. But then he says this guy, Brad Johnston, is blowing smoke about how the lake's improved. For the past six years, they've been stocking F1 hybrids in there, trying to improve the size and the quantity of fish, and it's been working. Uh, the current catch per hour while electrofishing for him as a biologist, is 156 fish per hour. The average over the past 20 years is 120 fish per hour. So it's clear that the, that the population on Grand Lake's improving and the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife is doing quite a bit of work to make that happen and keep it healthy. These are called mossback fish habitats, and Oklahoma Department of Wildlife has been putting these in the lake um, as they get money in, because I'm sure their budget's tight, uh, they've been putting in these fish habitats along with hardwood brush piles and also along with PVC uh, fish habitat. So this guy, Brad Johnston, is clearly managing a good program, doing what he can with what he has. And I think results go for themselves in his data and in the tournament data from the BFL Oki Division over the past. Uh, 20 years. Make of that what you will. But I've known you too long. It hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away. Yeah, yeah.